what's your name? My name is Antavis Hargett. Antavis. Antavis, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Where'd you go to school? I went to school at um, South Metro. South Metro. Okay, great, South great. Metro. Now, you and I talked earlier, and you got a million dollars for track. You told me you got some info yes, on it. I got okay? some good info. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. This is a little tough, okay? What, who's your favorite person? Who's your favorite person in the entire world? Father walking and talking like your mom, your dad. Who would be who would be your favorite person? Do you think? Probably my mom. Okay. Yes. Why do you do you love her? I love my mom. Okay. Love me too. Me. I love my mom too. I think I take a bullet for her. Here's a, here's a question for you. Okay. Yes, Let's say your mom got caught for murder. Could okay. Let's say your mom got caught for murder, okay? And you went to the courtroom with her, and the judge said, uh, Octavius, all right, so let's say that you're in the courtroom, and the judge says, Octavius, your mother is uh, guilty of murder, okay? You don't want to cheer tonight at all. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Um, so he says, he says, Octavius, your mother's guilty of, of uh, murder, and she's going to spend the next 50 years in prison. If you give the judge everything you own, your car, your money, your everything you own, you basically will have nothing except the clothes on your back. Would you give everything to get your mother out of prison for 50 years? Sure. Absolutely. I love okay. my mother dead just as much. Yes, I will. Okay. Now, here's another one. If the judge says, okay, he says to you, he says, now, I'm going to up the ante a little bit. I'm going to require that you spend the next 50 years in prison instead of your mom. Your mom will walk free, but you're going to spend 50 years in the, in the state prison. Would you spend 50 years in prison to get your mom off the hook? Yes, because I know her life is more as important than mine because some fact that she, she birthed me to this earth. Okay. And she's my mother, so, you know what I'm saying, I have that much love for her, so therefore I would do something. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yes. All right, now let's say this judge, he's, he's a little strange in his courtroom, okay? And he says, I'm going to give you one more scenario. He says, if you find an innocent baby, okay, and bring it into the courtroom and murder the baby, I'm going to let your mother go free. She won't have to spend 50 years in prison if you murder a baby. Would you murder a baby to get your mom out of prison for 50 years? That's uh, a tough one. Because I got a lot of nieces and nephews. Sure, sure. So that's something I wouldn't do. Me neither. Yeah, I, I agree. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, yeah. now, flipping over a courtroom, we're all going to have to stand before God one day. You know, We're all going to be judged by God by His Ten Commandments. One of the commandments He tells us never to do is he's, we're never supposed to bear false witness or tell lies. How many lies do you think you've told in your life? I told probably about like it's, it's probably been over a thousand. Okay. Probably okay. over a thousand. Gotcha, gotcha. Me too. I've told a bunch as well. What does that make you if you tell a thousand lies, over a thousand lies? What would you call me? That's true, yeah. right. Absolutely. It's a statement of fact. You know, we're not judging, we're just saying, hey, you did it, that's what you yeah. are, you know. Um, one of the other commandments he says we're never supposed to steal anything regardless of value. Um, have you ever stolen anything in your entire life? Yes, Ballpoint pen, sheet of paper, stole, you know, cheating on a test is considered stealing. Yes, you know? I am. Okay. What would that? What would that make you? What would you call me if I stole something from you? That's true. Absolutely right. Right. Absolutely. Um, now Jesus said, "You've heard it said, old, you should commit adultery." And he says, if you look at a woman and lust after her in your heart, have like sexual thought torture, that you commit adultery with that woman in your heart. And yeah, I know. That's how serious, because it shows what's in your heart. You know what I mean? Have you ever looked at a woman with lust before? Sure. Most men have. Probably 99.9% .9 of men have. So that would make us adulterers if we've done that. You know what I mean? So by those three commandments, not looking at the other ten, uh, do you think God would find you guilty or innocent on Judgment Day? Probably be, I don't know, I think I'm guilty though, because I, sure. I done a lot of stuff, but I, I repent from what I have done. I okay. pray about it and try to better myself and learn from my mistakes. What I did the first time, I learned from that, sure. from, the, from me um, getting caught up with it. So, right. therefore, next time, I know not to do okay. the same thing. Do you think, you think that gets off, you off the hook with God by asking for forgiveness? Sure, but in the Bible it says good to repent. So yeah, probably. sure, absolutely. It's a good to be sorry about what you've done. You know, I mean, it's uh, repentance, like to ask for forgiveness and to turn from it. Uh, there's a Bible verse. I'm gonna give this to you. It's Hebrews 9:22. It says, "Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin." Sins like lying and stealing, committing adultery. How do you get that? How do you get that shedding of blood? How does blood get shed for Octavius? Um, blood gets 
shit, like, for me, like, I can be, like, sick, it's like, me, me even having, like, sexual intercourse with my partner and we're not married. Mm -hmm. This, I could be shedding blood by just doing it. Right, you know but God demands perfect spotless blood, so it can't be your girlfriend or your own blood. So you want me to tell you how that works exactly? Yes. Okay. Remember we were talking earlier in a courtroom situation where you would not sacrifice a child to get your mother off the hook? Because you love your mother, but you value the life of that child, you know? The same respect you and I have to have bloodshed for us, and that's what happened when Christ died on the cross. Now think about this in that relationship. You would not sacrifice that baby. God sacrificed his sinless son for you. How much do you think he loves you if he would sacrifice his son to set you free from adultery, from stealing and from lying. If he's he innocent. Be more than the world. That's right. That. Absolutely. Size one you, you, right. You said you loved your mother, but you, there's a limit to what you would do to set your mom free. Yeah. God, God gave his very own son so that you and I can go free on Judgment Day and not be held guilty for what we've done wrong. And what he wants us to do is he wants us to turn from our sin and to follow him. You know? Like if a person comes out of uh, jail, a lot of times they say, you know, I'm never going to do what I did to go back to jail again. And God commands the same thing from you and me. Does that make sense? Is it recording? To you? Yes, it does. Yeah, sure it does. Sure it does. Sure it does. So what, do you think that's something you need to do? Have you ever done that? Have you ever given your heart, life, and soul to Jesus and repented of your sins? Yes, I have. Yeah, when did that happen? Uh, it happened when I started to go to church and learn more about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I sit at home and read the Bible. Do you? Okay, that's a great thing, man. I do that a lot. So when I be at home and sit reading the Bible, I just I pray as alone when I'm doing it. Okay. And, and I also I try to keep myself out of so much trouble. Like, I like I take long walks. Like except I get myself real mad, I just walk. Right. Take long walks and keep me doing something crazy. Sure. You know what I'm so, that's good. I'm like, the Bible tell the Bible tells us like with sexual sin to flee from it. Okay. And sometimes when you get tempted, going for a walk is a great thing because you're not getting yourself involved in sin. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, that's a great thing. Well, man, that's encouraging. So if you died right now and stood before God, would you tell him I should be led into heaven because Jesus died for me and I'm trusting in him? They say he's going to pay back everything that you did mm -hmm. in, in your life. And he's going to judge you upon that. Right. And, but, um... So I probably, I probably, when I probably tell them I, that I have done the right things to get into heaven, like right? Guide myself through life by not following the bad choices. Like I got two brothers in jail. I don't want to be mean, but think about this. If he says, "What about lying, man? You lied." What he? You didn't do the right thing there, did you? Yeah, he did, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same here, man. I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be mean, but. He'll bring that up. Yeah. What if what if he'd said, hey, man, I won't remember it anymore. When he goes to heaven, he says, every time Octavius lied, I won't remember it anymore. How would you feel about that? How about a young lady? Sure. That's what, that's what the Bible says when a person is born again, that he takes their sin and bear, remembers it as far as the east is from the west. How far? I don't know how far that is. It's a long way. So when you get into heaven, you say, Lord, I didn't try my hardest, but I put everything in my heart into Jesus Christ and what he did because he was the perfect sacrifice for me. You know, the Bible, sa the Bible says he lived a perfect life. So what he does, not only by saving us from our sin, but he accredits that perfect life to your account. You are as perfect as Jesus because of what he did for you on the cross. That's the good news, man. So you can walk around and live in freedom instead of going, man, I hope I've done enough to make God happy with me, you know? You can say, I've satisfied what God desired for me by what Jesus did, by putting my trust in him because he saved me and he gave me his righteousness. That's good news, isn't it? It is, man. But something for you to consider today, you know what I mean? Because there's nothing more precious than your soul. And uh, you want to make sure that, man, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior indeed. There'd be nothing worse than to go to Judgment Day and God say, hey, man, he's not your Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying? So, man, thanks for talking to me for a few minutes. Oh, this is a real treat to talk to you, man. And, uh, I was just looking at old Kyle going to get my hair cut. Yeah. <laughs> I need one too, man.